Recently, I was emailed by a fellow patriot in Colorado. The email contained a letter from the Department of Regulatory Agencies of Colorado concerning the Safer at Home Labor Day weekend. In summary, the letter decreed that all Labor Day celebrations adhere to the strict COVID-19 guidelines set by the state government. If the regulations were to be disobeyed, anyone present would have their work licenses revoked or at least negatively affected. In addition to the license warning, the letter also addressed the rise in COVID-19 cases throughout the month of July. While forgetting the BLM riots, which certainly did not abide by any health ordinances, the department undoubtedly blamed the sudden spike on those participating in July 4th Independence Day celebrations without adhering to the CDC health ordinances. Those from this department concluded that in order to stop another spike in the cases like the one from mid-July, the health ordinances must be strictly followed under the force of law. In their professional opinion, these celebrations of freedom cannot be so freely celebrated. But is Labor Day a true celebration of freedom to begin with? Well, in the late 19th century, millions of European citizens began to flee to America, many for its capitalist free market opportunities. These immigrants brought with them the numerous communist theories they had learned from men like Karl Marx. Upon arrival to America, they realized how, quote, unfair the free market of America was in the industrial era. With this realization, the immigrants led by Eugene Debs began to call for a communist change in America, sporting the concept of equal share of resources as their motto. Soon enough, peaceful protests turned into riots among the working class of America. And after years of unrest, murder, protests, and rioting, the sitting president, Grover Cleveland, decided to appease the small, complaining portion of the populace by designating a free day off with the hope of an increased chance of re-election. Well, in the end, this day off became known as Labor Day. Eugene Debs, the leader of the communist rioters, was imprisoned, and Grover Cleveland failed at winning the next election. So, you see, the first Labor Day was actually a result of individuals breaking the law to get their way. However, it is currently considered a day of celebration where Americans can rest and truly enjoy the fruits of liberty. Until now. Now such free celebrations have been removed, instead replaced by a constricted day of pretended legislation. This injustice, however, is no longer a result of un-American populace. It is the result of an un-American government. The entity that was first designed to protect our liberty has now become the one that denies it. Departing from its sole purpose, the government has created ordinances, mandates, and regulations under the color of law to accomplish their one-sided growth. They have then tricked the American populace into believing these mandates are enforceable by coining the phrase force of law. After years of the people of America accepting and even welcoming these breaches of the law, the government has established a dominant control over the Constitution and likewise the American people. What we now face is the compilation of corruption caused by years of these un-American tyrants. This tyrannical government now believes that it has the authority to suspend your rights on the basis of safety as it sits idly by and innocent people lose their livelihood in the same types of communist riots that the government of the 19th century allowed. This is why it is so incredibly crucial to remember our capitalist founding based on the ultimate word of God. When we stray from our biblical founding, tyranny begins to reside, people become restless, and the nation falls. That is why it is our duty to fight against the tyrannical injustice. That is why we must stand together. This is how America was founded. This is how we must make it again. Holy Writ records where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let us as the people of America rest in the Lord and act in the government around us to bring about the same change our founders did. Let us as Americans abide where the Spirit of the Lord is. This is Jake McCauley with the Institute on the Constitution, bringing you the American View. Thank you for watching our weekly commentary on the Constitution. You can join us in our mission to restore the Constitutional Republic through grassroots education by first praying for us. Next, you can study our materials. You can purchase our courses and materials on our store or become a member and get all of our content online for free at instituteontheconstitution.com. Lastly, share. Share your knowledge. Share our content. Teach our courses in your homes and community. We can provide the materials, the facts, and the support, but we need you to be the hands and feet of this movement. Thank you, and together, may God bless our efforts.